NASA just got crushed. China's space station is literally making oxygen and rocket fuel out of thin air right now, 400 kilometers above Earth. While NASA burns through one-third of the ISS's power just to breathe, Chinese astronauts completed 12 breakthrough experiments creating fuel from sunlight. But here's what nobody's talking about. Could this single technology hand China complete dominance over Mars? Let's dive right in. Right now, 400 kilometers above your head, something revolutionary is happening. Chinese astronauts just completed their 12th successful test of artificial photosynthesis in space. While you're reading this, they're literally making oxygen and rocket fuel from thin air. No massive power requirements, no bulky machinery, just pure scientific breakthrough that's rewriting the rules of survival in space. But here's what NASA doesn't want you to know about this technology. Let me paint you a picture of NASA's current reality. The International Space Station, that marvel of human engineering, has a fatal flaw. Every single breath those astronauts take costs them dearly. NASA's oxygen generation system devours one-third of the station's entire power supply. Think about that for a second. Imagine if one-third of your home's electricity went just to making air breathable. That's the brutal reality NASA has been living with for decades. It's like driving a car where the air conditioning uses more fuel than the engine itself. And here's the kicker. The ISS is dying. After 27 years in orbit, it's scheduled for a watery grave in 2030. Meanwhile, China's Tiangong station is just getting started, with potentially 20 more years of operation ahead. But that's not even the most shocking part. On July 14th, something extraordinary happened that most of the world missed. China launched their Tianzhou 9 cargo mission, carrying 7.2 tons of supplies to Tiangong. Hidden among routine food deliveries and equipment were special chemical catalysts that would change everything we thought we knew about space survival. These weren't ordinary materials. They were designed to do something that sounds like science fiction. Turn the carbon dioxide you breathe out into the oxygen you need to live, plus rocket fuel as a bonus. All at room temperature, all at normal pressure, all using nothing but sunlight. While NASA burns through massive amounts of power just to keep people alive, China's innovation runs on free solar energy. It's like the difference between a gas-guzzling truck and a Tesla except the stakes are human survival in the vacuum of space. Here's where it gets absolutely mind-blowing and why NASA engineers are probably losing sleep right now. Traditional space life support is brute force engineering. You carry everything you need, you use massive amounts of energy, and when something runs out, you're dead. China's artificial photosynthesis system flips that entire concept upside down. Picture this. Instead of carrying years' worth of oxygen tanks to Mars, Astronauts can literally make their own air using the Martian atmosphere. Instead of hauling massive fuel reserves, they can produce rocket fuel for the return journey using nothing but CO2 and water. The system works by mimicking what plants do naturally, but without plants, without soil, without the massive infrastructure that makes Earth-based photosynthesis possible. Semiconductor catalysts exposed to sunlight convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and ethylene. Not just air to breathe, fuel that can power rockets. But wait, there's something even more shocking that the mainstream media is completely missing. Let's talk about what this really means in hard numbers. NASA's current system on the ISS produces oxygen for three people while consuming roughly six kilowatts of power continuously. That's like running six hair dryers 24-7 just to breathe. China's system, it produces oxygen and fuel using semiconductor catalysts powered by sunlight, zero continuous power draw, zero massive heating systems, zero energy-hungry machinery grinding away in the background. For a Mars mission, this isn't just an improvement. It's the difference between possible and impossible. Current estimates suggest a Mars mission would need to carry about 30 tons of oxygen for a four-person crew. With China's technology, that 30 tons could instead be scientific equipment food, or spare parts. And here's the part that should terrify NASA's leadership. Ethylene isn't just any fuel. It can be converted into methane, the exact same fuel that powers SpaceX's Raptor engines. Think about what this means for the future of human space exploration. 
The nation that controls resource production in space doesn't just gain bragging rights. They become the gatekeepers of humanity's expansion beyond Earth. While NASA struggles with power-hungry life support systems that limit mission duration and scope, China is developing technology that makes spacecraft self-sufficient. Your missions can last longer, go farther, and accomplish more than ever thought possible. But here's where the story takes an unexpected twist. Before we crown China as the new kings of space, let's examine what they're not telling us about this revolutionary technology. Because behind all the impressive headlines, there are some serious limitations that could make this breakthrough less game-changing than it appears. First, the scale problem. The experimental module on Tiangong has roughly 10 to 20 square meters of usable space, about the size of a large bedroom. The amount of oxygen and ethylene this system can actually produce in each cycle is microscopic compared to what real space missions require. A crew heading to Mars would need tens or hundreds of liters of oxygen per day, plus kilograms of fuel. Current output from China's system? We're talking about proof of concept, not production-ready technology. Second, microgravity throws a massive wrench into everything. Controlling the flow and distribution of CO2 and water becomes incredibly difficult when there's no gravity to help. Reactions become uneven, efficiency drops, and what looks perfect in a lab suddenly becomes problematic 400 kilometers up. Here's the million-dollar question that China hasn't answered. What's the actual conversion efficiency? China has conducted 12 experiments but hasn't released the crucial performance data. How much CO2 actually becomes usable ethylene? If it's under 1% like some Earth-based systems, then we're looking at impressive science that's still years away from practical application. But what if it's higher? What if China has achieved efficiency rates that nobody expected? That's the question keeping space agencies around the world awake at night. Because if China has cracked the efficiency problem, they haven't just conducted a cool science experiment. They potentially solved the fundamental resource constraint that has kept humans trapped in low Earth orbit for over half a century. Here's what's really at stake and why this matters far beyond scientific curiosity. Space missions are fundamentally limited by what you can carry. Every kilogram of life support equipment means one less kilogram of scientific instruments, food, or spare parts. It's a zero-sum game that has constrained every human space mission since the beginning of the space age. The Apollo missions? Limited by how much they could carry. The space shuttle? Same problem. The ISS? Still facing the same fundamental constraint? But if you can make your own oxygen and fuel in space, those constraints don't just improve, they disappear entirely. Your spacecraft becomes truly self-sufficient. Your missions can last indefinitely. Your range becomes unlimited. China isn't just experimenting with technology here. They're potentially solving the resource scarcity problem that has defined human space exploration for 60 years. While NASA continues to rely on the same power-hungry electrolysis systems they've used for decades, China is quietly developing a completely different approach to space survival. An approach that could make the difference between brief visits to other worlds and permanent human presence throughout the solar system. The ISS produces oxygen, but at enormous energy cost. It can't make fuel. It can't operate independently for extended periods. It's essentially a research outpost, not a stepping stone to the stars. Meanwhile, China's Tiangong isn't just conducting experiments. It's proving that a radically different approach to space resource production is possible and they're not stopping there. According to the China Academy of Space Technology, they're planning to expand Tiangong from three modules to six. When complete, it'll weigh 180 tons and could operate for 20 more years while the ISS becomes space junk. The implications extend far beyond just China versus NASA. If this technology can be scaled up and perfected, it fundamentally changes the equation for human space exploration. Mars missions become not just possible, but sustainable. Moon bases become economically viable. The asteroid belt becomes accessible for resource extraction. But there's one crucial question that determines whether China has achieved a genuine breakthrough or just conducted an impressive science demonstration. Can they scale this technology beyond laboratory conditions? Because while the science is impressive, the engineering challenges of making this work for real space missions are staggering. 
The difference between making oxygen for three people for a few hours and sustaining a Mars colony for years is like the difference between a campfire and a nuclear power plant. The nation that masters resource production in space gains something far more valuable than technological superiority. They gain the ability to establish permanent human presence throughout the solar system. They become the foundation for humanity's expansion beyond Earth. China's artificial photosynthesis experiment represents more than just clever engineering. It's a potential solution to the fundamental problem that has limited every human space mission in history, the tyranny of the rocket equation. If this technology can be scaled up, China won't just win the space race. They'll redefine what the space race even means. So here's what we know. China just demonstrated technology that could fundamentally change how humans survive in space. While NASA burns massive power just to breathe, China's making oxygen and fuel from sunlight. The implications? Staggering. But the real question isn't whether this technology works. It's whether China can scale it beyond laboratory conditions to power actual Mars missions. Because there's a massive difference between impressive science and game-changing engineering. What we're witnessing might be the beginning of a new space age. One where the nation that masters resource production in space doesn't just win the race to Mars. They become the foundation for humanity's expansion throughout the entire solar system. The space race just got a lot more interesting. And we're only seeing the beginning. What do you think? Is China about to revolutionize space exploration? Or are we getting ahead of ourselves? Drop your thoughts below. And if you want to stay ahead of the biggest breakthroughs in space technology, hit that subscribe button. Because trust me, what's coming next will blow your mind. The future of human space exploration is being written right now. And you don't want to miss a single chapter. NASA just gave Blue Origin $3.4 billion as SpaceX's backup. But this might be the biggest mistake in space history. While Elon Musk launches rockets every two days, Jeff Bezos has managed just one orbital launch in 25 years despite burning $1 billion annually. One launch. Now they're promising eight launches this year, but insiders say they'll be lucky to hit two. So why is NASA betting America's space future on a company that's failed for two decades? Let's dive right in. Here's what NASA hoped you'd never find out. That $3.4 billion contract to Blue Origin? It wasn't about creating competition. It was pure desperation. Behind closed doors, NASA executives were panicking that America had become dangerously dependent on one man, Elon Musk. But here's the bombshell nobody saw coming. While NASA was writing that massive check, Blue Origin was quietly collapsing from the inside. And the warning signs were everywhere. Jeff Bezos stood in his rocket factory, promising eight launches for 2025. Eight rockets rolling off the production line like his Amazon packages. The world's richest man couldn't possibly fail at this, right? Internal sources reveal a catastrophic truth. Blue Origin can't manufacture rockets fast enough to meet even their own drastically reduced targets. The same company that revolutionized package delivery can't build a single rocket on schedule. Their second stages, called GS2s, are gathering dust in warehouses, incomplete. The boosters face identical delays. This isn't a temporary setback. This is complete systemic failure of everything they claim to master. Those eight promised launches? They've already admitted they'll hit maybe two. That's a 75% failure rate before they even attempt to fly. But here's what's really shocking. NASA knew this when they signed the contract. While Blue Origin struggles with basic manufacturing, SpaceX just unveiled something that shouldn't be physically possible. Their new Raptor 3 engine produces 560,000 pounds of thrust while weighing 170 pounds less than the previous version. More power, less weight. It violates everything we thought we knew about rocket engine design. How? SpaceX literally reinvented what a rocket engine looks like. The Raptor 3 appears so stripped down that Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, thought SpaceX was trying to fool everyone. This couldn't possibly be the entire engine, he declared publicly. But it was. 
SpaceX eliminated thousands of parts by integrating everything into seamless, 3D printed components. While Blue Origin adds complexity, SpaceX removes it entirely. And here's the kicker. This engine burns fuel twice for maximum efficiency using full-flow stage combustion, a cycle so difficult that Blue Origin couldn't master it in 25 years. SpaceX perfected it and made it look routine. But why did NASA ignore this massive technology gap? Blue Origin's BE-4 engines were supposed to be revolutionary. Methane and liquid oxygen. Cleaner and more advanced than SpaceX's original kerosene design. On paper, they were superior. Reality told a different story. These advanced engines faced development disasters that pushed ground testing into 2021 and 2022. While SpaceX was launching paying customers every few days, Blue Origin couldn't get their engines to fire reliably. When New Glenn finally launched in January 2025, it failed to land the booster. The rocket reached orbit, but reusability, the technology that makes rockets affordable, remained completely out of reach. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Raptor 3 achieved something Blue Origin's engineers said was impossible. Burning propellant twice in the same engine cycle without melting. The temperature differential would destroy conventional materials, but SpaceX developed secret metallurgy with exotic names like SX-500. How did NASA miss such an obvious technological superiority gap? The answer is more disturbing than you think. Blue Origin hired over 10,000 employees, nearly matching SpaceX's 13,000. But this number exposed their fundamental misunderstanding of rocket manufacturing. SpaceX grew their workforce organically alongside launch tempo. More flights demanded more people. It was growth driven by actual productivity. Blue Origin did the opposite. They built a massive bureaucracy around virtually zero output an army of employees with nothing meaningful to accomplish. The inevitable result? Mass layoffs. Over 1,000 people cut in February 2025. The official reason? Bureaucracy overtook progress. Translation, they built a company designed to fail. But here's the question NASA should have asked. If Blue Origin can't manage basic workforce planning, how can they manage rocket production? And why didn't NASA's due diligence 